And we are back. And we just finished 2012's Silver Lining Playbook, rated R with a runtime of two hours and two minutes. This is written uh, with screenplay and directed by David O. Russell from a book by Matthew Quick, the novel Silver Linings Playbook. In anticipation of Super Bowl 57, we decided to focus on one of our favorite teams, the Philadelphia Eagles. This movie is about Pat Solitano, brilliantly played by Bradley Cooper, who is coming home from a hospital after an incident. He comes home to his parents, Dolores and Pat Sr., played by Jackie Weaver and Robert De Niro. And he has to navigate this new normal for him where he has to deal with his ongoing issues, his bipolar, and allow himself, I guess, the grace to be okay with this new life. A lot of his thought processes are steeped in this other life where he wants to prove to his wife or his now ex-wife, Nikki, that he is a good guy. Well, I think he, he's under this belief that he could fix himself. And that everything by, will be okay. By just sort of like making these actually pretty superficial life changes by like losing weight and, and uh, reading the books that, that Nikki would like have has on her syllabus so that he can he can basically talk to her. And none of that is really about, none of that is really for him. It's really just for Nikki right, and this right. belief that somehow if he does this, then everything's going to be great. They're going to, they're going to have a love that is in, unimaginable. <laughs> he basically says he that. He basically Tiffany. says that, you know, when he's, he's talking to, to Tiffany at one point and it's, it's delusional. It's, 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 it's not true. And, I guess that's part of the whole bipolar thing is you become a bit detached from reality and right. you, you're, you're always going to be the way you are, but you have to get the help that you need and be willing to accept to take those steps. Right, right. And I'm sure in the beginning for somebody like that. Oh, it's difficult. Yeah. It's, it's difficult. It, yeah. It's, it probably seems like an unimaginable thing because you just, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Well, if, if I just eat healthier, this this will be fine. Right. Remember, he kept saying in the beginning, like, I'm not taking the drugs because they make me foggy. Yeah, yeah. They make me foggy. They but then he foggy. turns a corner because that fight that night with oh my the God. videotape. And yeah. he, the next morning, he's taking his pills. Yeah. Because he realizes he just can't, can't do, do it all. Yeah. yeah, by himself. I'm going mean, to go around. people are getting hurt. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Not just him. But not, just, not just him. Not just some bald tenured history teacher that, that <laughs> kind of deserves it, but yeah. his family, you yeah. know, his loved ones. Yeah. I'm going to go around the table and get impressions. Olive G, what did you think of this film? I thought it was good. Yeah. What would you like about it? Um, The storytelling? The storytelling. Yes. It's about, what's it about? Tell me. If you, if, if I was your friend at school and you said, hey, so-and-so, I just saw Silver Linings Playbook and it was really good. And I was like, hey, what is it about? What would you tell me? First off, my friend would never, ever ask me the concept of Silver Linings Playbook. All right. Well, I'm just saying. <laughs> it's a hypothetical, <laughs> Olivia. Yeah. Okay. So, like, what's it about? Yeah, yeah, what's it about? Tell us what it's about. It's about a broken man trying to get his life together and meeting a woman who's also broken, and they end up getting together. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Great synopsis. Great synopsis. Do you have a favorite character? Oh, what's her name? Tiffany. 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 Yes. You like Tiffany? 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 I keep getting Tiffany confused with Vicky for some reason. I don't know why. Vicky? Or, oh, Nikki. Nikki. Oh. Uh, her name is kind of Nikki? similar. The ex-wife's The ex-wife is, is Nikki. I thought yeah. it was Vicky. No, no, no. Nikki. Nikki sounded too much like a boy. Nah, I guess like Nicole. Nicole. Yeah. Short for Nicole. Yeah. Tiffany played by the lovely Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah, she they both did such both an amazing did job, job of yeah. portraying these like really, like you said, broken people who are just trying to navigate this new normal. Gee, what'd you think of the film? It was uh it was good. Yeah. Did you have a favorite character? I also like Tiffany. Yeah. Why'd you like Tiffany? What about her? She was funny. She was funny. She also had great fashion sense. Yeah, and I liked her hair. Yeah, her hair's cool. And her dark nail polish. Mm -hmm. I thought that was excellent. Uh, did you have a favorite scene? Mm, nah. No? What did you think about the first time they meet at that dinner and 
Pat can't stop running his mouth. It was very awkward. It was very, very <laughs> awkward, yes. Yeah, that was probably the most uncomfortable dinner I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> they just could not. There was no filters at all. On anybody. On well, anybody. on either of them, them uh, two. Yeah. yeah. Did I ask you, Olive Jew, if you had a favorite scene? No. Did you have a favorite scene? Um, the crazy dance number? I, I like the part where they won in the end. But I cool. also thought the part where, like, they screwed up the big move was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> it is cringy. Everybody's I've seen gasping. This, yeah, I've seen this movie so many times, and I still cringe when I see that scene. I'm like, oof. The big move. The big it was move. really dumb of her to drink before it. <laughs> and yeah. I'm sure I mean, that I didn't even help, think but I, I think even if they were 100% I think even if they sober, were 100% sober. Because you see oof. them practicing it, and it's just, just a disaster. Yeah, it's just mayhem. <laughs> yeah. It never gets... It yeah. never gets completion. Honestly, if, if if they couldn't do the big move, then they probably should have changed their big move to something else. Yeah. Yeah. I so agree. I agree. The not so big move. Yeah. They probably would have scored higher. Maybe. I, I still have my theories about how that score, how they got that score. Would you like to share it with the audience? Because <laughs> when you're watching the, the, the dance performances, the, the fantastic dancers, the judge... At the end, the last the last judge to give her score was a ball breaker. She was <laughs> yeah, she was scoring the lowest, lowest, yeah. just low scores. For, there, there's like seven point nine, eight point one, and then she's like six point three or something yeah. like that. She was a stickler. Yeah. And then when Tiffany and Pat finished their number, everybody else is like she four point eight, four point seven, four point nine, two four point, point nine is one four point eight. And I think she gave him a 5.4. She gave him a 5.4. She was the <laughs> highest scoring judge. I think she gave it for effort. I think she was bribed. <laughs> Seriously. Who, were, who bribed were, her? <clears throat> Jay or Ronnie? Uh, the, Jay's the brother, right? Yeah. I think it was the brother. Because you didn't see him. You didn't see him. He was somewhere in that, in that auditorium. Ronnie was always at the table. I'm I'm pretty sure Jay wasn't going to let his dad go down because of a, <laughs> a terrible a dancer. So he was just like, and and seriously, the the judges, what do they got to lose? He could have probably just walked up to that lady and said, "Here's a hundred bucks, just make sure they get a five. <laughs> Sorry, I, Jake. The brother is Jake. Jake. Yeah, that's the only way to guarantee it. <laughs> I think they got it on merit. They could have got it on merit, but I would not be surprised if some <laughs> if some cash was uh, exchanged. exchanged. I'm going to ask you. You and I have seen this many, many times. Mm -hmm. Impressions. I love this movie. This is one of my favorite like love story movies, just because it's crazy. These people, yeah, like you say, they're 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 dealing with these like severe mental issues, and. They, they come together in this like, sort of like unconventional way and there's this deceit going on with the whole writing of letters and yeah. whatnot. And it just all, everything just falls into place so nicely, so beautifully and, and everybody's performance is just Amazing. outstanding. I, really I strong script. Strong really script for everybody. Robert De Niro is so good in good. this role. And yeah. like the at the very end when he takes him and he's just like when the universe gives you a sign or the universe reaches out to you you gotta you reach, have back. To reach back it would be a sin if it you would be a sin you yeah. you and you'll carry with you like a curse for the rest of your life yeah and then he's just like don't fuck this up <laughs> like Jason Statham <laughs> and Spy <laughs> and to me that was just such a beautiful, beautiful little moment. speech between the two of them and he just like hugs him and he says I love you Dad yeah. That was just beautiful. Yeah. And then yeah. after that, when he goes and he, he chases after Tiffany and the way that that's shot. Yeah. Uh, at the end, I know G was complaining that they're standing in the middle of the street. <laughs> in this case, it doesn't really matter because the thing you're trying, you're trying to convey the emotion and just like how there was nothing there but really them. Yeah. That the, that the rest of the world just sort of like disappeared Fears. or first it actually revolved around them and then it just... It yeah. zoomed out to like oh the nothing right. matters yeah. with them. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so many great character moments in this and just and it's funny because you kind of have a not massive ensemble, but you have a lot of characters in this. You have Dr. Cliff, you've got Ronnie, you've got Veronica, mm -hmm. to some extent you've got Nikki, you've got Jake the brother, you've got Dolores the mother, you've got Pat Senior, you even have crazy betting Randy. And they and they all just and Danny, 
his friend. And the cop. Chris, the cop. The- I have to say, Chris Tucker usually gets on my nerves, but no, he did he was, not he get on my nerves in this. in this movie. He was fantastic, just enough and just fun enough and lovely enough. And just, I loved the final sequence when they're doing the the dance where like everyone rallies, especially Ronnie. He's like, yeah, yeah Pat, yeah. yeah, Pat, yeah. <laughs> Get you a friend like Ronnie. Um, yeah, I mean, this is one of my favorite movies. I agree with you, much like something like um, another movie that I feel like about broken people, Punch Drunk Love, mm-hmm. which is sort of unconventional storytelling about, which is basically a love story. Yeah. Same thing here, just broken people finding each other and navigating the landscape and, and going on with their lives with each other now. So it's it's really beautifully done. Uh, amazing, amazing script. It's kind of funny because you read a lot of stuff about David O. Russell and he doesn't come across as a nice person, but this this is an exception. I mean, I usually boycott a lot of stuff when I have strong feelings against somebody, but this is a film that I don't think that I cannot not watch. Mm -hmm. I think every time I've seen it on cable, I stop whatever I'm doing and I just watch it because it's just, again, just amazing storytelling. The script, the script is like, like a final meal. It is just so good. There is no filler in this. There are no slow bits. Everything moves. Everything has its place here. And it just propels the story along. I'm never bored. Even though I've seen this multiple times, I always find something that'll make me laugh or just make me cheer Yeah. every time I watch this. Yeah, everybody's so good. In it. And uh, amazing soundtrack, too. Amazing, amazing soundtrack. Um, There's really not much to critique here. I mean, I don't think... There was nothing as far as I'm concerned. I'm going to... I'm going to go out and just say this to me is a perfect film i would give this a 10 there's no perfect films whatever you're incorrect <laughs> olive g one to 10 uh 8.5 8.5 gg one to 10 i'll give it an 8.5 too uh i'll give it a nine nine absolutely absolutely if you haven't seen it it is currently on hbo max please check out 2012's Silver Linings Playbook from Matthew Quick's novel written and directed by David O. Russell. You won't be disappointed. Really, really just amazing storytelling to the point where it becomes magical. This is definitely... It's it's probably not for kids, though. It is not for kids. kids. Yes, sorry. It is. I did mention it's rated R, so it's not for for children. Yes, it's, it's... Yeah, there's some strong language. There's some intense tense moments there is talk about mental illness if you have older kids we watched it with our 11 and our 14 year olds i think this is a great kind of precursor to talking about certain issues if you have a loved one who suffers from bipolar and you want to talk to younger kids about this again yeah i think what would you say like 12 and up maybe 13 Uh. 13 or 14. 13 or 14 up. Yeah. We're a little laxer here. We're, we're a little laxer, yeah. a little freer. But yeah. Uh, I, I would probably say for most people, it's probably like a 13, 14 or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is not puppies and unicorns, this story. No, there's some vulgar talk. Yeah. Uh, and the, the beginning of the film, when, you're, when you discover why he's in the, in the hospital, it is, as G said, gross. <laughs> Yeah, and like they they revisit it later on, and it's it's a, there's even a little bit more yeah, yeah. gross, but <laughs> um, all right. So the, the history teacher even said you should leave. Yeah, like, this he is his house. What the hell? He has that's some nerve. real nerve saying that. Right, he's the one this crinkly with old guy. man messing <laughs> with that guy's <laughs> wife, and he's telling him to leave crinkly old man <laughs> i'm pretty sure he was just bald he was probably maybe about no he, he looked like he was, he was maybe about he looked 10 like years he was older. 80 years old <laughs> <laughs> i don't know about 80 80 might be a little much he was yeah. she was probably like in her 30s and he was probably like in his 50s that is unacceptable uh, unacceptable 
Yeah. Listen, the heart still, wants what the heart wants. Yeah. I don't Gross. think the heart wants what the heart wants. That, is, that should be illegal. All right. Well, well, what are you trying to teach us? I'm not trying to teach you. I'm just going by the story. I think that she made a bad decision. She made a horrible decision. She was, well, she was doing it with was, an old man. She. I don't think by the end of the story she's with the old man. Of course she isn't. Yes. I think I that she... She just was unhappy in her marriage and she made very bad decisions, but they were hurtful decisions because they hurt Pat and Pat exploded. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm not justifying his behavior. I'm not justifying her behavior. I'm just trying to offer some sort of explanation for why things went down the way they went down. Mm-mm-mm. But I agree with you. She, I mean, if she checked out of her marriage, she probably should have done the honorable thing and said, just let's end this here and let's just move on. They should have them like those open relationships. So, no. so they're no, oh, no, 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 no. That's yeah. Open just get a divorce. There's no such thing as open relationship. Yeah. Really, isn't there such a thing as open marriage? There, there are, is, but it's but not. There is, no. but that's just, that's yeah. just split up just already. Split up. You're yeah, yourself. you're just yeah, you're deluding yourself. <laughs> I guess that's it. Uh, there's really not much to say. Go Eagles. Yes, good luck to the Good Eagles. luck to the Eagles. We don't like her football. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, we're not a big football family, but if we're going to root for somebody, it'll be the Eagles. Yeah, well, absolutely. But what if the Eagles aren't there? They are they there. Are. It's yeah, the it's Eagles versus the, Kansas City. Yeah, the Chiefs. Always? No, not this year. I hope the Eagles win. I hope the Eagles win, too. My math teacher likes them. Yes, yes. Your math teacher is correct. Yes. Go Eagles. I Go guess. Eagles. Go Eagles. Go Benjamin Franklin's birds. Mm-hmm. And that's <laughs> it from Franklin's us. Team. And we will bid you They're all a good. Benjamin Franklin birds. That's Anything what they call them. George Washington. No, no, no. Ben Franklin. No, ben He's Franklin. from Philly. He was, he was the big guy from Philly. Yeah. Ben Franklin. When Dad and I went to <laughs> Philly for that so music angry. festival, I mean, there's like a picture of Ben Franklin like every three blocks, isn't there? <laughs> I don't know about that, but yeah, they love their Ben Franklin. They love their Ben Franklin. It's all about the Benjamins. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's it from us. Wait, I have a question. Is Benjamin Franklin on money? Yes, he he is. is. He's on the $100 bill. Is it $100 or $50? He's on the $100. $100. So does that mean... That's why the Benjamins are the $100 bill. Is Benjamin Franklin more important than George Washington? No. Well, let's think about this. I mean, Benjamin Franklin was incredibly smart. Is this really? They're both founding fathers. Uh, Benjamin Franklin was ne- Benjamin movie. Franklin was never a president. No, he wasn't. Well, well, how come Abraham Lincoln is on the penny and George Washington? I mean, not George. Washington. I don't isn't know. George, George, isn't Lincoln that. on the five dollar? Lincoln's on the five dollar bill too. Yeah. Yeah. But like, does that mean like they like? <laughs> Why are we talking about this? Yeah, yeah. Can asking. we end this already? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> no need to be in a rush, Grace. All yes, right, well, we again, we're busy. Super Bowl 57, go Eagles, go. Go Eagles, go. And go, that's go it. Eagles, go. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it from us, and we will bid you all a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs>